your it's not like a uh, microphone <laughs> all right so welcome everyone to the enterprise corner um as we're getting started today on our on our second half of the journey to greatness story so this is something that we're gonna have to be we're gonna really just follow up from last week to close out on um and wind up uh especially because that was a really intense session that we were trying to conclude so today's episode will probably be a little bit shorter uh if anything if not it, definitely not longer than the previous one but it will be a little bit shorter than the other one so welcome to everyone thank you for joining us uh, and uh, we should be having Shadrach here with us any minute from now. And uh, Kenny is, well, Kenny is Kenny. So we'll have Kenny <laughs> when we have Kenny. Um, but yes, for now, we should be having Shadrach. Shadrach, uh, today, is, uh, today is one of those days where it is the first, it's the first Enterprise Corner Sunday of December. December being the final month of the year where we are going to prep ourselves and everybody's trying to prep themselves for getting ready next week. Obviously we're going to try and look at uh, getting prepared for the next year. That's a big story that we should all focus on, but to everyone here, please uh, give us your names, give us a shout out. Uh, tell us where you're watching from and tell us where you are continuing from. This is going to be a wonderful session. Shadrach to you, my brother, how has your week been? Fantastic. My week has been all right. I've been, you know, as usual, Locked down to this chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly where you're supposed yeah. to be. It's been fantastic. It's been fantastic. It's, it's been a long time since I went out, but I'm, I'm enjoying it right, right inside. Yes, it's fantastic. The week is okay. Thank God we are mm -hmm. still alive. Yeah. And that indeed. And that I'll, I'll everyone safe. I'll, I'll have been. It's been tense work. Uh, because you know the thing is the most productive months of a year. This was a study done by Red Hat where they actually found mm -hmm. that the most productive months of the year are October and November, because everyone is trying to finish strong. So anything that goes November going into December, that's when you find people working flat out, uh, doing hard meetings, going after deliverables. So the most productive months people have are actually between October and November. And I can tell you that my November going into December has been, has been it's been a lot. Uh, products yeah. are coming out, new services and everything. I just remember to everyone that uh, Shadrach and I obviously have got services that we do offer to people here in family finance and investment services um, and investment advisory services uh, for those of you who need to also learn about investment, learn about family finance, and also get your books in order in general. So with that, Shadrach, yes, it has been a wonderful week. Let's get down to the conversation at hand. Now, we've been talking about the journey to greatness. Uh, and we were, we've were we really been referencing the book Good to Great, uh, which really covers a lot of this topic of the journey to greatness in depth and in general. So, uh, And it's covered by Jim Collins, uh, is one of his two best-selling books, The Journey to Greatness and Built to Last, where he looks at companies that supersede one generation and also greatness. So I just wanted to do a quick recap. What is the definition, as he talked about, of a company that went from good to great? And he talked about a company that has had 15 uh, cumulative years of stock market returns above the general market returns. In other words, the return on investment on this company has been above what the general market has proceeded for 15 consecutive years. They have a distinct point of transition and the follow uh, followed by All a right. cumulative three. Chadrag, I think it was yours that's actually frozen. Um, right, I think we've we've frozen Shadrach for the meantime. By accumulative uh, three years, it's followed by accumulative three years of stock market returns at least three times of the general market uh, uh, the general market over the next fifteen years. Three times, sorry. Uh, so, in other words, they have to have accumulative fifteen years, a transition point. And then they have to be able to perform three times better than what the market has done. Uh, and some of the companies that were stated in this, they were found 11 companies after looking for hundreds of them. They did settle on 11 companies that did fit the bill, the bill of good to great. These were um, Abbott, Circuit City, Fannie Mae, Gillette, Kimberly Clark, Kroger, Newcore, Philip Morris, and Pitney Bowes, Walgreens, and Wells Fargo. So the three, the three things we went through last time, uh, just as a quick roundup of good to great companies, was they had to have level five leaders who had very strong professional will 
Uh, they, they always talked about the institution more than they talked about themselves. And they always had this dogged determination to get through. But they also had personal humility to make sure the company came first. They, they, they didn't want to always be the star of the show. It was always the company first, but they always focused on results, good structure, setting standards, and in all forms. The second component is good teams. Te uh, people that followed good teams, the ones that always look at putting together a good phenomenal team and then co-creating a direction, co-creating a vision together with that good founding team that was able to build it in the executive team so that they don't hire helpers, but they actually put together a team of people to build the next uh, the next generation and the next direction. Uh, and also they were they they also figured out how to get the good the right people then get the right direction but to be rigorous about selection but not be ruthless and finally the 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 perspective with which they followed they confronted brutal facts they were always honest about brutal facts uh they always said look let us not try and hide from the truth let us deal with the truth but however they always had an unwavering faith uh in terms of how they did it Okay, so this is something that we always want to focus on, having an unwavering faith in terms of how you do things, but still uh, being able to face reality. You don't give yourself faith by hiding from reality, and you give yourself faith by facing reality. So Shadrach, there's something um, picking up from here. I wanted to start yeah. talking about this last point, because of course we've talked about importance of having a good leader. Even Ray Dalio talks about that. We've also talked about the importance of good teams. Teams are essential in developing a good in developing a good business uh the team you put together matters more than even the product itself because that gives you the consistent execution okay because that is the determining factor of a good product it's a good team this part about perspective and perspective shadrach to me um always comes down to that conversation i always have about the three levels of sight uh that yeah. you have plain sight insight and foresight and for a group of people to be able to confront reality for what it is without having to lie to themselves about reality while still having an unwavering faith usually tells me something important, Shadrach, that these people have got a good level of insight. Because insight yeah. is, the, is the only thing that a person can have where they can see something happening and they are calm. They're still mm -hmm. able to say, no, we can get through this. It's the, the, the two best examples. I think one is biblical is Jesus in the storm. He didn't deny that there was a storm. He just knew that the storm was under his control. He had insight as to how the elements of nature were under his control. And he was able to say quiet. So that's why he was comfortable sleeping in a storm. He had the unwavering faith that the ship was going to make it to the end of the destination because of that. The second one, I think I always I always give the example is the book of Second Kings when the Aramean troops were about to attack Elisha. And Elisha says, um, and his, Elisha's servant sees all these troops and he says, Master, what are we going to do? We're, we're afraid. And Elisha says, do you not see that they are more for us than they are against us? Then he prays and he says, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Then he sees and he sees all these glorious chariots and he sees chariots of fire on his left and his right. And he saw that they were more for him than against him. But what kept Elisha calm and collected was that Elisha had insight, okay? In other words, he could see inside how this situation would pan out. He knew how it would work. So one of the things that often allows people to be able to both face reality, because Elisha didn't pretend that the Aramean troops are not there. He didn't close his eyes and say, no, they're not there. They don't exist. He said, they're there, but there's actually more this side than they are there because of the insight. So I always say insight is the determining factor of a person being able to face reality while still have un, uh, still having unfav un, unwavering faith. That's my view on that point, on that one, before we get to the next three. Indeed. The, uh, actually, uh, uh, that's a very fundamental point. Uh, what, what, what I actually find uh, stands out on that story, Mirumba, is partly because, you know, when... What gives you confidence to sleep at night and feel free and be okay is having insight. Without insight, you're in panic mode. When you're in panic mode, you're going to make a lot of terrible decisions. So I think perspective is very important, all right? Can, can, can we normalize uh, uh, acquiring uh, you know, a certain level of insight in, in our businesses? Like I was saying, I was saying last time, I ran a business, but I, I have proper insight because I know which months I make money. 
I know which months I don't make money. I know which months, you know, I, I have. So when, when, when business is going down, I'm not going to quit because I have understood my business. I know what are the tools when I make money, when don't I make money, and things like that. So indeed, uh, that's a very fantastic point, Jumba. And I'm looking forward to uh, the remaining three points as we uh, conclude our today's discussion. You are now good to great journey to greatness. Good. Yeah. And and for those of you who I think I just wanted to put that point is how to actually gain insight is always a very simple journey from of Bloom's taxonomy. Always go through it. Bloom's taxonomy is a very good learning tool. It's 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 stated in teaching that a person first remembers something, you absorb information, you remember it, in other words, you recall it, you understand it. Then the key to gaining insight is to apply that information. I see a lot of people reading books, doing all sorts of things. Uh, you go for seminars and everything. You write all this information. You go for so many things. But the problem is that people don't apply what they learn. And then they never gain insight because Shadrach knows what months he makes money and what months he doesn't because he's been doing the work. Okay, He actually understands the cycles of his business. That's why in the, in the non-money-making months, when he sees that revenue is lean, he's not, he's not terrified. He's not... He's not scared and petrified thinking his business is going to collapse. He knows he has insight as to how his business operates. So he's able to continuously, in the face of the brutal fact that, yes, he made less money in this month, he knows that that's just one of the lower months and the higher month is coming afterwards. Well, one of the higher months is coming afterwards and the seasonal factors will come into play. But he only knows that because he applied, he was able to analyze the cycles of his business. He was able to evaluate and realize which are the money-making months, which are not the money-making months. And therefore, he was able to create the principle, which was very, which he now governs himself by, as X months are non-money-making, X months are money-making. So I will plan my finances according to the cycles of my business and how I understand them to be. Do you see that that's a very important insight that you can only gain with experience? You can't shortcut it by watching tutorials and everything, even coming to things like this. We give you knowledge, but for you to turn that knowledge into wisdom requires application. If you do not apply it, insight becomes very difficult to come by. So I just wanted everyone to understand, follow Bloom's taxonomy as a way to go from knowledge to insight. But the problem is a lot of people want to shortcut it because they're looking for the results very quickly without going through the journey. So that's what gives you that perspective where even in the face of a down moment, you're able to say, ah, we're going to be okay. Ah, we're going to be okay. Um, and somebody, uh, there, there has a question here by uh, Ablion who has said that, does this apply to startups? It intensely applies to startups. When you're st- This is why we always tell you, start with as much lean credit. Don't, oh, don't borrow too much money. Try and make sure you gain insight because here's the reality about insight. Insight is what makes you make less mistakes when you do gather other people's money. That's why people will ask you questions. How long have you been in business? How long have you been earning? If you don't gain insight when you're starting, you have to gain it. And you have to gain it by applying this information. If you do not gain insight you will, you, you, and you start borrowing money for your business, you're going to discover different things about your industry that you did not plan for. You're going to discover problems that you weren't prepared for. And then all of a sudden, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna end up burning through a lot of money. And then you're going to owe people a lot of money with very little increase in revenue to show for it. Now, now you're under pressure where you have to pay interest and the principal while still running your business with no growth in revenue. And that's because you, you, you try to skip the insight phase by borrowing money before you gain the insight of your industry. So I just wanted to put that out there. But uh, without taking too much time, let's get into the main the, the, the fourth concept which is the hedgehog concept. And this is a very important one. So the fourth concept, and I'll read it out from the summary here. uh, The idea is built on a concept of the Greek parable, the hedgehog and the fox. And the fox pursues many ends and sees the world as complex and is scattered and diffused. The hedgehog conversely simplifies the world into a single idea or a principle that guides everything it does. Good to great companies demonstrate uh, demonstrate a strategic difference in two areas. They build their strategies around deep understanding of three circles, and they identify a simple crystal, uh, crystalline concept to guide their efforts. And the hedgehog concept lies in the intersection of these three circles. What can you do best in the world at? Okay, what can you do best? 
What drives your economic engine? In other words, what is in demand? What can you earn money off of? And three, what are you deeply passionate about that you can put your energy into? When you can find these two, and remember last time we talked about passion, that you have to be careful about excitement and passion. Passion is often about other people. Okay, it's a feeling towards other people. You want other people. Shadrach wants families to have good financial base. So therefore, there's a passion about others. Okay, the product, the, the passion behind the product is about his feeling about strong families always holding. Okay, so the, the, the drive should be about what others get from the product or the service. So something you are deeply passionate. In other words, you are angry if it's not done properly for other people. It makes money because people want it. Okay, something that's in demand and in need, okay, and something that you're very good at. Now, if you're looking at the Ikigai principle, Ikigai also says the same thing. Uh, it says you, what you build your business on should be something you're good at, something that uh, something you're good at, you're passionate about, and something that the world needs. These three things, it must tick all these boxes for you to have a long-lasting business or a long-lasting idea. So, And then you're able to then get paid from it. Because you're energetic, very good, and it's in demand. So those are three things that you want to be good at. It must be proficient, a problem, and a passion together. So getting clarity on the hedgehog concept is an iterative process that takes time. Good to great companies take about four years on average to crystallize their concept. It's taken me five years to understand my hedgehog. It, it, it's taken me five years at least, people. So yes, it takes about four to five years to be able to do this. Yet they found it. Yet when they find it, it's quite obvious. Uh, so it's a, it's a quite obvious truth and it's undeniable. And this is the powerful concept that helps you find your niche, focus your business in a specific area. So I just wanted to put that out there. Shadrach, what are your thoughts on people finding their hedgehog point? Uh, you know, finding that uh, can be quite important, especially for a startup person. When you are starting, guys, that's the phase where you make a lot of mistakes, all right? And sometimes, you know, human beings, we just do things because somebody says it's nice. Yeah. And that's why more often than not, we don't make it. Can you find, I like the question that, that this uh, uh, concept brings to the table. It says, what is it that you are good at in the world that you think only you can rock it up, that you can do to the best of your abilities? Can you find that which you are extremely good at? Because that is what value is about. What drives your economic engine? What are you deeply passionate about? You know, there are people who are very fortunate. Remember, oh, I keep saying this. They are passionate about things that pay their bills, okay? Of course, we want to be clear here. We're not saying when you're not passionate about something, you can't make it. No. Being passionate makes it easier for you to find better ways of doing something. Exactly. It is not a guarantee when you are passionate to make it. I'm an entrepreneur. I don't have to like what I do because I exchange my advice for money. You come, I give some advice, you give me money. All right. That's what we do. But if it happens that I'm doing something that I really love, it's going to be a plus for me because I'm going to find different. I'm going to be making money having fun. That's the difference. So when you are passionate, passion drives you. It makes you do things that other people didn't understand why you're doing them. It makes you wake up in the morning early when everything else in you says, you know what, can you sleep? So I think uh -huh. the edge of, edge of concept is a fantastic one because it also helps you to build new strategies that are going to be able to get to the end, all right? If you're not passionate, you, you easily quit. When there's a problem, you quit, all right? There's a minor setback, you quit because you lack the drive. So passion acts as a drive, all right? This is the same thing we, 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 we tell people in relationship when it comes to money, um, you know, a lot of people, they, they are, because I do with family and couples, sometimes I have clients who are together. They tell me, no, we're we about to get married in the next three months. Uh, we have this great chemistry. You know, we're just having minor issues around finances. I tell, I tell them, finances are, no longer, are never minor issues. Because these are actual big, big things. I ask them, what are you passionate about? The lady is passionate about something else. The man is passionate about something else. Look at their financial goals, totally different. This, this tells you when they are together, it's going to be a, a, a catastrophe. It's going to be a disaster. So understanding yourself and what you are passionate about also helps you to know who to involve in your life. It yeah, also exactly. helps you to know which what person can you partner with on a business venture because you know what to stand for. You can't come and partner. For example, you can't come and partner with somebody who, who is so passionate about fish. You, know? you are passionate about you know, uh, technology. 
as something else. What has got that to do with fish? So when you understand your passion, it will, it will, it will shorten the distance when it comes to partnering with people, all right? I am passionate about finances. See the guy I'm with on the screen, Munyumba. The guy who is also passionate about finances. So together we complement each other because I understand what, 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 what I'm good at. I, he knows what is good at. So together we can partner because we are, we are fighting towards the common goal. So being passionate is not just good for success, but also helps you to have a clear roadmap and good to bring in your life journey, all right? You, you, you work with like-minded people, like it helps to invest that kind of people. But if you're not passionate, you're all over the place, you try this business, you fail. But again, being passionate makes you shock yourself, Munyum, because you're going to discover something about you that you never thought you knew how to do. That's one shock I've come to see about passion. So yeah. I think the head of concept is fantastic. Guys, can you learn to be good at something? What is it that you are good at in the world that only you can do it better? What is it? What drives you every morning when you wake up? Yeah. You know, even Jordan Peterson said this. He said, first, focus on what you're really good at. And when you become really phenomenal at it, find out what you're good at or better than most people at. Now become the best at it. Become world class. It's extremely important for people to really get down to that because this is where the mistakes happen. I know that there's a lot that people will say, but I'm telling you, most wealth managers will tell you that their high net worth clients made their money doing one thing phenomenally. Even the woman who, who handles JP Morgan's uh, wealth base, you know, she said the same thing. She said, the majority of my high net worth clients, my ultra wealth clients, all made their money being the best at something. Then how they kept their money was investing in other things. That's when they started getting a wealth manager to say, look, I've made all this money playing basketball. I've made all this money uh, running a business. I've made all this money being one of the best bakers in town. I've made all this money doing this. Now, where do I put it so that it doesn't evaporate from spending? Okay. So that you have to differentiate between making money and storing money. And diversification is something you have to be very careful about. I think that people, especially in your starting days, you need to minimize the things that you're engaging yourself in to make money uh, in terms of the activities so that you become very phenomenal at something because people pay according to phenomenal. Okay, the, the better you are at something, the more willing people are to pay you at it, even if it means sometimes even bankrupting themselves to owe to pay you. So I, I, I think that's one. And two, Shadrach, I think I'm going to touch on a point you just brought up. You may have brought it up without even noticing. But the issue of who to bring into your life, you know, entrepreneurship is a life journey, people. In other words, there's also things to do with life partnering. In other words, your wife or your husband. If you're engaging in business, the partner you bring into your life is going to affect your ability to execute that business. And if you don't know your personal values, you, you shouldn't be... You know, the problem I've seen with a lot of people, Shadrach, is they pair together on situation. Oh, this one looks nice or this one is rich. You know, it's situations. Or oh, this one's career is going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, and and no, just, just on that point, people pair together based on sexual compatibility, most of them. And I've always, <laughs> I, was, I, mean, I, I say I this every time. I was being <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a family finance person. I talk about this every time. People come together based on sexual compatibility. That's why things don't work financially. Guys, yeah. just because you have an amazing sexual relationship with somebody, then it means you can build an empire with them. Those are two mm -hmm. different things. You can have this amazing, amazing uh, uh, sexual relation with this person, but the empire can't be built with them because it's just a moral bond. Maybe being good at sex, don't think they are good at nothing else. So you have to be very careful, guys, when when you are dealing with uh, passion. All right. So. It helps you to know who to bring in your life. And look, if I, I'm going to need this person for this specific and I'm going to need this person for this. I think that gives you clarity. Yeah. Also, also, but no, you... just to add to this is that you, your, 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 the things you're most passionate about are the things that touch on your values. They touch yeah. on your core values. There's something inside you that this, this will make you, this is why you wake up certain hours. And if a person does not align on values, even Ray Dalio spoke about this. He said, when you're forming a team, align on yeah. values. The Thomas Klinman model, which talks about uh, how to negotiate and when to create what we call a, um, a collaborative agreement or collaborative partnership. And by the way, people, um, what's it called? Marriages are integrations. Two people become yeah. one. 
So the, the when you look at the five levels, just very quickly of partnerships, there's there's uh, there's co compete and comply, coexist, cooperate, coordinate, collaborate. And the higher yeah. up you go, the stronger, the more closer people get on values. So if you're yeah. going to form an, an above collaboration where two people are working very simultaneously, like they're working in one channel, there is integration where two people become yeah. one. This is the grounds yeah. by which people even merge companies. They integrate yeah. because they've got very similar values. They can see yeah, that exactly. they've got very similar values or else one of them just acquires the other. When you see two companies come together, they merge because they've got similar values. If they don't have similar values, the other one just acquires the other one and they just swallow it and make it a part of them. So there's a, there's a big difference as to how these things operate. But I just wanted to put this out there. When you're forming a business, the person who you're going to be with in your life will not understand the late hours you're bringing in. They'll complain. Why is this person no. waking late hours? If they don't value is what you shitty? value, they're going to complain. Then they're going to nag you. They are going to demand that you stop working as hard. They, they, there's a difference in values people will start to face and they'll start to, they'll start to have. Yeah. So even when you're yeah. picking a partner, and by the way, most entrepreneurs are married people. Uh, there's something about marriage, especially in men, that brings out a lot of the enterprising spirit. So having the right partner becomes a brilliant asset in your entrepreneurial journey. Picking the wrong partner based on things like sexual compatibility or just circumstances will harm your ability to film to form the business that you're looking for. And this is going to be a problem. And, and, for you. That that part you brought about is very important. And just to, to add to, to add to add a big guess to that, what Mumba is saying is extremely fundamental. Guys, I, I'm just, we're just going to be honest with you. Being a successful business person requires that you sacrifice some things. Yeah. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, one of the things to sacrifice is sexual relations, eh, more often than not, because entrepreneurs work longer hours. Now, if you have somebody who has a different view of business in your life, right, they want to keep twerking every now and then. It will be very <laughs> difficult to progress. <laughs> the, like, remember, that's the, that's the fact. These are the facts. Yeah. People have got to understand that to be successful, there's always a sacrifice. Nothing comes for free, all right? A lot of successful people, you see, have sacrificed a lot of things. Yep. And sexual relations is among those things because they don't have enough time to be twerking all the time. But because you have, you have deadlines to meet, you have clients calling, you are thinking about strategy, you are going to, 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 to scale up. What are you going to do? So you are always engaged. Your mind is always focused on other things. It's very rare that you're going to find a highly successful person who is also highly involved into these uh, 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 activities. It's very, it's very rare. Right, but because the number of times you spend are working are more than the number of times you spend enjoying yourself. So if you have a partner who does not understand what you're sacrificing for, the value you stand for, it's going to be difficult to grow. And I keep mentioning this uh, statement, but just because of an amazing sexual relation, somebody, it doesn't mean you can build an empire with them because it's not true. An empire requires maturity, a lot of sacrifices. All right, like like like, like uh, 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 what Mnumba has, has been able to say, that you, you are sacrificing for longer hours. Does this person understand the hours of sacrificing? You work. Do you know how, how, how many hours people that, that that work for entrepreneurship? Working for yourself is different. Anytime the phone can ring, hours, you can go to work. work. Anytime so a client can go at 20, 20, 20, 20, 21 hours, twenty two hours, twenty three hours. You need the money because there's no salary that you're waiting for. You have to go and do the work. Now, imagine with somebody who does not understand your dream. They're going to think you're going to cheat, all right? Mm. When you're going to make money for the family, that's very painful. That's why things don't work because they don't understand. What are you passionate about? Can you not the person you are, you are going to bed with? Are they passionate about this also? Right? Are they appreciating what you're standing for as a, as a business person? I think those are very fantastic points you brought to the table. Thank you so very and, much. And I'm just, I'm just going to put one example. What's his name? <laughs> um, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank was having an interview where he talked about this guy who was sitting in the back of one of his lectures who turned around and said to him, uh, <laughs> sir, I have a business where I've created a cloud application for small um, hedge funds, small business, small what's it, hedge funds who manage, he said, anywhere yeah. from five to $250 million of assets. And he said he picked a niche and he had a business that was generating $5 million of free cash flow. But yeah. his, his, his fiance was on his neck about the fact of the hours he was working. She kept yeah. on stressing him. She kept on saying, look, you're going to have to basically pick this business or pick me. Okay. She actually basically put him at that gunpoint. And Kevin O'Leary, I think, turned around to the guy and said, look, man, um, what's more easily replaceable, 
a person who doesn't understand you, what, what your vision is, uh, is he said to him, said, look, what's easier to replace? A $5 million free cash flow generating business or you're sitting in a room and you've just informed a room full of young women that you make $5 million a year in business. But what yeah. I came to that conclusion is the reason she was, she was, this is a guy who's coming out of college and he was a college student. He invented the, he invented the product, started a business, was generating $5 million in free cash flow profits here. Okay, he's generating profits here. But she cannot understand his working hours because she does not value the same things he values. He's a hardworking person. She says, I want you at family events. I want you at this. And he's saying, Look, I've got a business that requires my time and I'm studying at school. And he's basically cementing a financial future for them. So if you don't understand yourself and you don't understand your values and you don't understand your vision, it's very easy for a person to deter you and move you away from things. But it is also yeah. going to create a filtering mechanism, man or woman, about who you're going to bring into your life at that intimate level. Who you're going to partner with, it also determines who you can partner with. Shadrach and I have got very similar values. Okay, After all this time we've been interacting, we've realized we've got very similar values. So we're comfortable working with each other a lot. And we're comfortable collaborating on projects more and more because we have very similar values. The people who you bring into your life must have similar values from partners to your life yeah. partner as well. That is your similar values that you must have. If you're picking yeah. people on anything other than values and vision, somewhere down the lines, it's going to break. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. down the lines, it's going to break. When it gets tested by the hours that you require to build your business, you are going to have this issue. So I just wanted to bring this point out, especially for entrepreneurs, that it's extremely important to, to really nail down what you're passionate about because it's going to determine what you're willing to work extra hours for, what you're yeah. willing to sacrifice for, what you're willing yeah. to wait for, sweat for, what will consume your mind. And if the other person does not understand what's going to consume your mind, They'll think other people are consuming your mind. Now you've got this split view of trying to assure this person you're not cheating while trying to focus on this thing that, yeah. you're, that you're trying to build. It's, it's and rough, it, guys. And it becomes much tougher for yourself. So you can here's the here's truth with most people. You can make the decision. Well, look, I've been married before. Shadrach is married. We know this stuff. You can make the decision to pick someone based on circumstance and sexual compatibility <laughs> and just give yourself a problem down the line. Or you can make life harder for yourself at the beginning by making the decision to pick people based on values and vision and then try and give yourself a smoother road down the line. But yeah. they, it's, it's either going to get hard later or it's going to get hard now. But you pick yeah. which one you want to deal with. Because yeah. I'm just telling you, this integrated view that where you start looking at vision and values now and you start picking the people who are in your circles, including the person you marry, but you're picking the people in your circles based on vision and values, it gives yeah. you a much longer time that you get with them. Um, yes. But the, I think we've really nailed that point because it became a, a splinter point that I just wanted to get to. But the hedgehog concept does answer the question, people. Make sure that it's something that you're good at, something that is in demand. People, that's very important. Okay, Don't do things that are not in demand because you'll be complaining why people aren't buying, but they don't want it. You're doing things yeah. that people don't want. Something yeah. that is in demand, something that is in your heart, and something that is in your hands to do, something that your hands can do. Okay, yeah. so just something that's your hedgehog and simplified. There's another entrepreneur, there's a guy who was also giving a speech, who was saying, People, until you get to a million dollars, and he was talking about to Americans, I'll say it for Zambians, until you get to a million quarter of annual revenue, you shouldn't even be doing multiple things. You shouldn't really be doing multiple things because you're splitting your focus too much. Focus on one thing and get very good at that supply chain to the point where you can drive it up to somewhere around a million quarter in annual revenue. Then you start splintering off and diversifying like we talked about last time. So uh, I don't know if you have any other points before we get on to the, 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 the third, the fifth point of culture of discipline. I, th I think I'm just going to say again the, the same issue of values because it's very important. A lot of people have failed terribly in business because of lack of uh, compatibility in terms of values. When I was starting my, my, my business uh, for family finance, talking to couples, I talked to a, a certain couple, Mnyomba. their husband is a pastor, and then the wife, uh, she's an accountant. She comes to me, she tells me, Shadwick, I have a problem, and I need help, all right? Now, this, this lady, she's married to a pastor. The pastor wants her to be my boss at church. The pastor wants her to be in those uh, groups for women, groups at church, but she can't. 
You know why? Because she's an account, she, she's pursuing a career in accountancy and she wants to, to climb the corporate ladder. She wants to, you know, she wants to, 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 to get to position or see you at some point in her life. So she's studying her, she's upgrading her credentials, but at, at, at home, she's not having a peace of mind. And I, I tell you know what? Before you met this man, did you know he was a pastor? She tells me, yes, I knew he was a pastor, but I didn't know he was going to be this demanding. I said, no, it's not, it's not fair. You knew he's a pastor, which meant by nature of knowing he's a pastor, you're supposed to go and be the pilot, my bosa. That's just the common sense. All right. So, so it's so unfair if you get uh, into a, a, a marriage arrangement with somebody you don't have the same values with, because you won't just be unfair to them, but also unfair to yourself. You're going to give up something you really love just to satisfy someone else's needs, which is one of the most stressful things you can ever do in your life. To give up everything you love because you want to be with someone. That's very, very stressful. All right. So make sure before you, you go to bed with somebody, can you understand what do they stand for? It's important for business. Marriage is also a financial transaction. So look for specific values that you have. Is it really true this person can support me coming home? Like, like I was saying, no, this lady is a corporate person. She wants to come the corporate ladder, but the husband is a pastor. All right. So are these people bad people? No, they're not bad people. But why are they fighting? They are fighting because they stand for two different things. All right. So they are good people who are just not good for each other because they exactly. stand for different things. So that is the reason why a lot of businesses don't work, partnerships don't work, and marriages end up collapsing because you entered into marriage based on sexual compatibility. It's different because after the sexual relations, there's going to be bills to pay. There's going to be rentals, school fees. All right, food to buy. Is it really true you can sacrifice all that uh, beautiful life because of a, a feeling, sexual feeling? It's not a good thing. So, guys, it's important as a business person that you really think about who you are going to partner with, either as a, as a, as a marriage partner or as a business partner. Like I remember saying, Mnumba and I have a lot of things in common. That's why we work together very well, because we believe in, we have certain similar values that help us to work together in harmony without, without problems. Now, imagine you're working with somebody who believes in something you don't believe. It's going to be twice as hard for you to grow. <laughs> twice as hard. So there's a, the problem we have, I see on social media, there are lots of articles. People say, no, never marry somebody. You're not sexually compatible. And I'm saying, this is wrong. You are teaching people to go into poverty because of sexual compatibility. After that, there will be bills to pay. Those are the facts. There will be bills to pay after that. So is it really true that you can go into a relationship or a partnership because of this arrangement? It's a tiny component. Most of the time we spend looking, we think about money, building, buying land, sponsoring your children to school. Sex is not part of those things. Don't give you any money. It's not going to pay you anything. So you have to really uh, have a roadmap and make sure that you, your passions, your goals are clearly identified and uh, properly uh, our land will to come with uh, you know uh, a, a strategic plan to succeed in your business and also in your mind you stressing yourself or stressing the other person How about you, just go and go and read as to why warren buffett had had to get a second wife and by the way it was his wife who brought the second wife it's a very strange thing but why warren buffett ended up getting a second wife is because when the when 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 they finished when they now became successful and millionaires the wife said, I actually didn't want to be a millionaire's wife. I want to be a singer in California. She left yeah. him and brought it. She brought a replacement because yeah. they didn't have this conversation about values at the beginning. Yeah. They didn't have yeah. the conversation about yeah. values at the beginning. Then he just discovered his wife wants to go and sing in California because that's where her heart truly was. It, it wasn't in being. A, it was just that at the time when they were starting to build their lives together, she didn't have much money. He was getting started out. So they just pulled their resources together and they worked on their circumstances. But when the, yeah. pop, the, the lower income circumstances were alleviated, now he had to disrupt his life with a new partner who gets brought into his life, trying to now manage how the kids feel about that while still yeah. trying to run Berkshire Hathaway. These yeah. are very stressful things that can actually break you as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Your partner can break you. Okay. They can break your spirit and your drive to do something if you click the wrong person. Know, you know, you know, know. Sometimes, because you're with the wrong person, they always make you feel like a troublemaker. Sometimes it also makes you begin to act like you're not normal. Imagine you're always being looked at as if you're a troublemaker in a relationship. It's very, it's very stressful, guys. Always saying sorry. Sometimes you don't even know you're projecting. You find yourself a projecting. Different yeah. So it's so it really, it really look, it's the, the whole greatness principle in terms of a great life, a, a great business, a great uh, legacy, 
all boils down to being able to identify your values. And I think in today's world, if you want to see where the moral bankruptcy and the failure of, of, of our society is coming from, is people not being to being honest about their true values and being yes. honest about what they stand for and not actually taking time to identify what their real yeah. values are, not what is nice to say out there. You can't say, mm -hmm. I like peace. Then when you get behind the wheel, you're busy cursing people out on the road. You have to have true values. Now, yeah. the next principle I just wanted to get into that is the culture of discipline. And here's yeah. what they said in the book, Good to Great. Most startups don't grow into great companies. As they grow, they start to introduce uh, introduce bureaucracy rules that make up for that make up for the incompetence and lack of discipline. To avoid bureaucracy, hierarchies, and excessive controls, and instill a culture of discipline through disciplined people, thought and actions okay listen to that very carefully instill a culture of discipline through disciplined people okay who are you, who are you bringing in you got to make sure they're disciplined thought yeah. and action even if they're talented yeah. are they disciplined that's the important part they yeah. can be very talented but ill disciplined somebody can be very ill ta talented but they have a drinking problem on the weekends Okay. Yeah. How do you do? How, how, you, that's not a person to have around, especially when you're trying to build something. So combine Never. the culture of discipline with an ethic of entrepreneurship to set a superior performance. And in the book, Collins outlined several several tips or components that can be used for great organizations to, uh, to for both a culture of discipline and an ethic of entrepreneurship. Now, here is a point I just wanted to quickly drive at. Yeah. If you want to have disciplined people in your organization, the question is, are you hiring people based on availability or are you hiring people based on belief? Because yeah. if people share beliefs with you, they will give their time and their energy. People yeah. put their heart in things they believe in. That's yeah. the reality about your heart. It goes to what you believe in. So if you're not believing in the business and what it's doing, the question is, will you give your time and energy to it? And that's where I think where yeah. discipline comes from. Because even disciplined thoughts comes from what I believe in. Disciplined actions mm -hmm. come from what I believe in. We're back to this issue of values again. We're back to it again. Because, and this is yeah, what exactly. Dalio was saying. He's saying, before you hire someone based on skills, because a lot of you people are busy saying skills, skills, skills. Skills are important in executing work. They are. They're extremely important. But for the person to give their energy consistently and in a mm -hmm. disciplined fashion, it's more than the skills they have. They're very skilled yeah. footballers who have drinking and women problems, okay? Who rock up at practice ten hour, two hours late. They practice very little. Their careers are cut short. One injury and that's it. They're gone. Because they don't practice. They don't play properly. They don't focus, okay? There's a lot of people who have squandered careers in all sorts of high-paying, high-performance areas because they did not have discipline. So the question yeah. is, what determines your discipline? What often determines your discipline is what you believed in. What you truly believe in will drive it. So he said, when you're hiring somebody, first thing you want to assess is their values. And he says, have a way of questioning them. Um, I will give you all this. Uh, look up something called the 36 questions to falling in love. It, it's a very strange tool to use. But if you, it, it's a way. That's, to that's, that's a very nice one. Hey, hey, thank You'll be you. shocked, guys. You... You'll be shocked. <laughs> No, but thank you. That's that's a fantastic one. That's I, I, and I, I think you should you should share it again on your page, guys. It's a fantastic tool. No, but thank you for that too. It's fantastic. <laughs> so you see, like it's it's not just and it, it, it works very well for marriage, but it even works yeah. well for people. Um, yeah. if you if you like, I'll give you the very first question they ask. If you had a dinner party, who would you invite? So yeah. the who you'd who you'd sit down and have dinner with speaks to the things you value in people. So there's yeah. a way, that it's a coded way of asking questions to people to extract their values. If you yeah. ask values-driven questions about people in an interview, and then you sit down and you ask, and then you start to ascertain things like, okay, now what are your talents, your gifts? Yeah. Not the things you have a degree in. What are the things you are talented in? Okay. I want to see what you're talented in. If it's the same thing you have a degree in, fantastic. That's even great. But now let's look at what you're really phenomenally talented in. Then we can get down to what skills have you obtained? What are the written and learned skills you have acquired? If you start yeah. with values, talents, and skills, okay? VTS, yeah. people. Values, talents, and skills. You will actually get to the kind of people who will be very disciplined. However, the problem is we often do it the other way around. We yeah. assess people on skills. Then we say, okay, what are you talented in? Then we try and force yeah. them to adopt our values of our business. 
Big mistake. This is why businesses don't have disciplined people in their in their workplaces. They are hiring people who are not who don't share the values of the organization, and as a result, they end up losing they end up losing the focus of their people. Shadrach, what are your thoughts on this issue of uh, the culture of discipline? As to avoid having excessive rules and bureaucracy, just have disciplined people. It's much better than having all these excessive rules. Have disciplined people and let them actually work in a disciplined fashion and rather use a culture than use yeah. a, a, a complex set of laws. What do you think about that? It's a Bible brings from Numba. In the, in, in the Bible, uh, 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 there's a scripture that says to obey is better than to sacrifice. It's a Bible principle. When, when you have people that are disciplined, it makes the, the, the job easier. And like your people who are skilled, who are high talented, they, can, they, they are sacrificing for the company, but they're not disciplined. Because discipline is everything. If we are going to last, no, we, we talk about building walls. You are building walls because you want to enjoy yourself, but also you want your loved ones to enjoy themselves. You don't want to have worry. We, we, we work, we invest because we are terrified about tomorrow. So to, to have a peace of mind, we keep investing, we keep building this wealth. But if you are not disciplined, you may not live long enough to come and enjoy your hard work. That's the danger about not being disciplined. So discipline is key for success. Because if you are people that are disciplined, they're not steal from you. Right? Some companies, they are inventory intensive, then they are service intensive. We find that you have all these inventories in stock, and your people are not disciplined. They'll be stealing from you. You employ somebody, they run away with your money. Because you are bringing people not disciplined. So People that are disciplined have a way of attracting even more clients to you because they are going to notice those those uh, values and they know these these are good, but they are very welcoming, right? There's a place uh, in Kawata, uh, some, I, I usually buy uh, uh, a shawarma from them. It's called Grab It. When you go to that place, sometimes you know the, the people are very welcoming. They are very nice. They talk to you in a certain way. So what do I do? Whenever I'm in that in that area, I pass to go and pick up a shawarma and eat from there because I love the service. The people are nice. I keep buying and I keep recommending people, can you go to grab it and, and get yourself a shaman? Because the people at that place are very well behaved. They have this respect. They are disciplined people. You even feel safe just being there. I, I forgot my phone there. I, I went, I found it. They gave it back to me. Now imagine you have people who are not disciplined. <laughs> I forgot my phone. I would have lost it. So but they called, I called and said, no, you forgot the phone. Now you can come and pick it up and grab it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I sent my, my nephew to go and pick it up. He brought it back home. So you need people who are disciplined because discipline is going to attract people that are going to give you more business. People that are going to value you more than other, uh, more, more than you realize. But if your people are talented, but they're not disciplined, you are going to crash soon. All right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that, that being the case, I think Shadrach will be with us again. But yes, discipline is extremely important. Um, and discipline, having people being disciplined at something often comes from them agreeing with the vision of what you are building. If what you are building is something that inspires them, you will often gain their discipline. You will get their discipline. So have they bought into your vision? Because one of your things as a leader is to sell your vision to your team and sell your vision to the people who work within your industry. That's why being a leader is not always about being a technocrat. It's actually about being a very inspirational person. Um, the, the more the more inspirational you are, the more visionary or prophetic you can be towards your people and you can sell them something strong and compelling to see, they will obey what is required. They will respect the workplace enough to give back anything that has been left behind by a client. They will not steal inventory because they believe in the mission of the business. So before you go and sell the mission of the business off to your customers, be very careful to sell the mission of your business to your people, okay? And if they have bought into it, you will get their discipline. Because one of the things, um, I remember there was, a, there was a guy who was who was actually talking about the comparison between Jesus and Moses. And he says, Moses struggles with obedience because uh, in terms of the people, the law of Moses is a struggle of obedience because you're trying to force people to obey a law while Jesus was actually trying to instill a culture. It's not that he was saying the law was no good. But he wanted to get people to, with their hearts, adhere to a law, to win the hearts of the people to adhere to the law and to adhere to the principles that are to be lived by for a reason that somebody came and sacrificed for them and they moved the hearts. So the question is, are your people, uh, have your people with their hearts 
bought into what you are doing? The team you are building, have they bought into? That's why um, when you're building a business, there's something I call the six fits. Uh, there's, there's, there's founder market fit. Are you a good fit for the industry? In, in other words, is this something you're talented in, passionate about the hedgehog concept? That's called founder market fit. Then there's problem solution fit. Have you, have you found a problem and solved it? Have you found the adequate solution to the problem? Then the third level of fit is what we call team vision fit. Has your team connected with the vision that you are putting in front of them? That's an important one. So for your team to be disciplined, they need to connect with the vision that that, and they need to deeply connect with the vision that that they're going forward. In. So your job as a leader is to constantly sell this vision to the people who are around you. Then you can do product market fit, business model industry fit, and then uh, brand culture. Fit. Is your brand creating a culture? We're going to go through that finally in the final process. But I just wanted everyone to understand the importance of uh, of discipline and the way to uh, to acquire it is actually to sell people your vision. Then the final thing he talks about in this, the sixth one, is called technological accelerators. Good to great yep. companies think differently about technology. Specifically, good, com good to great companies think of technology as an accelerator, not a creator of momentum. Okay? The technology does not determine your direction. It just speeds you up. Okay? Technology doesn't create customer satisfaction. It just enhances it. If you have poor processes in your business, technology won't save you, okay? It will no. not make things better. Your processes have to already be there. Then you overlay it. Before you automate and you create an app, can you create good manual processes and then install technology to speed up your growth? That's what it's there for. Have you already started growing? So before you bring in the technology, technology will not create your markets. That's a dangerous way of thinking. If you think technology will create your markets, maybe in some instances, but majority of instances, technology does not create the market. It will become a liability to you if you have not created a market already. So he says, avoid the technology trap and adopt new technology due to the desire for excellence and creation, not out of fear. Don't say, no, my competitor has this. So if I don't have it, I'll lose. No, that's a mistake. You're, it's not about just trying to be afraid about what your competitor has. Is it something that's going to propel your level of excellence and your speed of delivery? If it's not something, be careful because you're going to acquire a huge cost that will take you down. So these are the six points. Chadrick, what are your views on, and I know you, when we talked about technology, you always talk about your experience of taking your classes virtual and how yeah. that was a, an accelerator. But from what I know, Shadrach, you're already in the business already. Yes. And you just transition yeah. using the Zoom technology. Yeah. Not you yeah. created your market using Zoom technology. No, no. Uh, and that, that's important. Technology, a lot of people are scared of technology. Sometimes they, they do it because someone else is doing it. No, If you are bad at your work, you bring in technology, you should be bad. It won't exactly. change anything. All right. So you have to understand that technology is simply there to accelerate you, to just increase your speed. For example, I was meeting people and to, it became, it, 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 I reached a point where I was unable to meet all my clients at once because there's this one coming this time, then meeting them physically, driving traffic. What do I do? I think it's better if I did it uh, virtually. It becomes easier, all right? Not that I'm starting the business from the scratch. The business is already there, but I tell my clients, you know what, guys? You can come and learn with me still online. And they say, okay, let's try it out. And it works very, very fine. Right now, we are building systems that are going to do to, to, uh, that are 100% virtual, 100% online. So, technology helps you accelerate. And in most cases, if you do it right, technology uh, triples your income. Yeah. Because now you have access to a lot of people. My example, when I was doing my, 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 my series, I would meet people, maybe they are 20 in a class. I meet them, they are 10, they are 15. But when I, when I went virtually, I would meet. 200 people at once. My platform is able to host up to 2,500 people at once. Now, you can imagine if you have 2,500 people and these are just paying for you under the squad. How much is that? Just as, as an estimate. So technology can also triple your finances if you do it right. You have a good name. Uh, people trust you. Now you bring in technology. Now you're going to now uh, cut up for a, more people now in the system, the industry, which, is, which gives you more money. So you have to understand the first thing you have to do is look at technology as an accelerator. What is it that you're already good at that you can use technology to amplify? All right. Thank if you, you sell scones 
How can technology help you sell more scones? Not that technology will improve the taste of your scones, no. Technology will simply help you sell more scones. The same bad scones you've been baking. If, if they have a bad taste, they'll still be out of a bad taste. But if they have a good taste, you're going to sell to somebody in Kafue, somebody in, in Chilanga, somebody wherever. People are going to order from you. So it becomes easier to advertise your products because there's technology. Not that it changes the product. So the key is for you uh, uh, to think of technology as an accelerator, not as, a, uh, not, not as creators of, of momentum. I think that's a very fantastic uh, point. And now here's the issue, guys. When it comes to technology, a lot of us say, but do, do I have the money to build this technology? What do I know about technology? When we say technology, everything is technology, guys. Look at, look at us here. We have this enterprise corner uh, on a stream. We are streaming live from you on Facebook. This is technology. In the past, you know, there could have been a ZNBC summer, there, multiply, whatever it is. Yeah. It could have been there. We could have paid a lot of money to be hosted on a TV. Do you know how much it costs just to advertise on TV <laughs> or to just appear on TV? It's a lot of money. But see what technology has done. We can have our show right in front of your of your of your, 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 your phone screens, right on Facebook. And it's the same as a TV station. No difference. You can see us. And, and this is better because you can participate. You can ask questions. It's even much more better than TV. Have you seen? So technology has made work easier. All right? So, so that, that, that's, 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 that's the point. So you don't have to, be, have to have a lot of money. See, how can you use Facebook? How can you use Zoom? How can you use YouTube? How can you use whatever it is, this website, for it to improve your business so that you can, you can reach more people? The more people you reach, there is power in that. Because the more people get to know about your products, the more the chances are that they will recommend them to somebody if they like them. So use sure. technology to your advantage. A lot of us here on Facebook, they come and here's what you do. People go to each number. And I keep talking about this because I'm not picking at people. They go to each, they get a picture of food they post. Tomorrow they eat somewhere and they get a picture of food they post. If you are so passionate about food and you are comfortable posting food, why don't you open a restaurant so we can come and buy from you? Right, use technology to benefit yourself. So when you are taking pictures of food, you are posting on social media. We are seeing those things, but the difference that are not benefit, we are not making money out of that. So can you or open a restaurant? Magazine. Here? So yeah, or a food magazine. Thank you, Minum. So that you can yeah. put those pictures and sell them to us. We can buy. And like you just wasting your bundles posting food. People take you out to have money. They pay for food. You take pictures, begin to post as if you paid for food. What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. It's true. Like, uh, like if you're so passionate about something, use and yeah. you're using technology, use yeah. it to make money, people. Like, if you, if you found that you're good at something and you're passionate about it, find out who needs it, and then use technology to deliver it better. But I, yeah. I really like the importance of getting comfortable with technology. And people, technology is just processes. It's just about the processes. Technology can take any form, any shape or form. Okay, it's not always online and everything. Technology is just the way you do things and the tools that you utilize to do things. Okay, and now utilizing new technology. Also, people think about this very carefully. It comes at a cost. It comes at a time cost. You have to learn how to use that technology. So it's, it's, it's use in your business should be that you already have a good product that you now want to get to more people. You want to get it there faster. You want to maybe do it at a lower, at, at higher margins. That's what it's there for. But if you have a bad product, people, if you have a bad product, you have a bad product. Too Technology bad. won't save you. It will not save you. If you have a bad TV show, you have a bad show. So that's the reality. If you have a bad, if you have, if you have, if you have got bad jokes, you can, you can have bad jokes on stage and you can have bad jokes on Facebook. It'll there'll still be bad jokes. Yeah, so it's same. the actual product itself. That's really important. So now there's something we call the flywheel. Okay. Now, yeah. when you build all these things together, there's what we call the buildup and the breakthrough. What is it that people get to that breaks them through it? And then what are the levels to follow? So there's the flywheel of uh, the flywheel of, of, of the good to great principles. And I just wanted to share this very carefully as, as uh, and I've got, I just have it on my screen now, but the flywheel actually helps you understand the concept of good to great and how to put it together into your business. So let me put it, um, let me share it there. I think you can all, I don't know if you can all see it, but that is what we call the, the good to great flywheel. So when you look at it, the first step you're seeing when you're looking at the good to great flywheel is here. This is level one leadership. Level one leadership and a strong team, first who, then what, is all about putting together, uh, what's it, disciplined people. 
So the first step of a good to great business is a good leader who puts together a good team that then establishes a good vision. Okay, this creates people discipline because you can have all these other disciplines. But if your people are not disciplined, then execution becomes impossible in a disciplined fashion. The second stage here, this is called the, the, the discipline thought, is to be able to have a good perspective, good insights. So confronting yeah. brutal facts while maintaining unwavering faith is all about yeah. having industry insight. If you have insight yeah. into something, I have seen three market, I've seen two market downturns in the stock market and three market takeoffs. The, the stock market selling down doesn't even scare me anymore. The first time I saw it, I got scared. Uh, I was worried. I just saw things were selling off. The second time I was like, ah, this happens. And I, and I knew that bounce back was going to happen when I saw stocks were underpriced. But that is insight I gave from being in the industry for 10 years, seeing these things happen. Okay, that's insight. So in other words, having insight, running your business with insight, and then designing your hedgehog concept. These two things, insight plus concept, and it's often the same thing because what you have a lot of experience in often it becomes what you're very good at. Because your experience yeah. can be a good determining, your experience and your learning skills and everything can be a good determining factor. Those two will give you disciplined thoughts. So you have disciplined people because of leadership and good teams, because of your, your insights and your hedgehog concept, you now have disciplined thinking. Because you're not just running after money left, right, and center. Sometimes you'll even say, look, that's a good opportunity, but it's not for me. Okay? That yeah. industry yeah. is great, yeah. but it's not for yeah. me. It's not part of my hedgehog. So I'm going to stick yeah. to what I'm good at first, get very great at it. Then with time, maybe I can look at, the, uh, at, the, at diversifying. But if you don't have a hedgehog concept, oh, there's money there. Oh, there's money there. Oh, there's, you'll just start running around like that. So you, your thinking will not be disciplined. So you notice once you have disciplined people with disciplined thinking, the buildup shoots into the breakthrough. Okay? The buildup becomes the breakthrough. And then you develop a disciplined culture with technology, which gives you disciplined action, okay? So with that disciplined culture, because you picked good people, now you've got this disciplined culture who have got disciplined thoughts and you've got technology that helps you consistently deliver. This is how you move through it. And this is a, this is a lesson even I've had to learn as an, uh, as an entrepreneur in my space is also to start saying it was important for us to, to streamline certain things. I used to get excited about, okay, no, this is cool. Oh, that's cool. I used to get excited until I said, okay, we'll slow down. <laughs> what am mm -hmm. I very good at? What do people need from me? And I've gotten to that stage in business where, Shadrach, I can even say, you know what? It's a wonderful opportunity, but it's not for me. I can yeah. actually say that and I can go to sleep. Thank calm. you, but no thanks. It's not for me right now. It's not in my plans. Um, for now, this is what I'm focusing on. And I will finish this first before I start taking on new things. That mindset yeah. has been a very hard one. And it's very hard for people who are especially running after sales and all these things to start saying what is for you and what isn't. Because not everything is necessarily bad. It's just not necessary. That's just the reality. And Shadrach talked about two people who are not generally bad people, but they were just not good for each other. They, they were bad for each yeah. other, but they were not bad people. So just because something is yeah. a good opportunity, that doesn't mean it's your good opportunity. So your disciplined mm -hmm. thinking allows you to do that, and therefore you have disciplined actions. So Shadrach, as we as we before we move into the final step of creating of how the three C's that people should create, what do you think about this um this this thought of the flywheel? Mnyomba, this is a masterpiece, uh, and and I like the fact that it just, it starts with the uh, level five leadership, where you have you first have to have a good leader in place. And then you ask yourself a question, who am I going to bring on my team? Once you have disciplined people on your team, then you say, what next now? So you have a good leader. You have, uh, you've, you've brought in people that have the same vision as you, people with the same thinking abilities as yourself. And then you have the same vision here. So now how do we move forward? What next now? And then you say, now confront the brutal facts, right? Discipline the thoughts. Head of concept. So I like this concept in part because you know it is what differentiates the average from the great. You know, there's there's I worked, I worked, I worked uh, 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 as a coordinator for projects for southern province province. And remember, there are people that are employed not because they were very educated people, but I I don't plan to interview people and employ people. Some people I employed them based on their discipline. So discipline sometimes may open doors that your skills can never open. 
that your intelligence can never open. So discipline is more attractive than intelligence. You can be smart, but if you're ill-disciplined, it will be difficult for people to work with you. All right. So there are people that, that I was able to give a chance to occupy certain positions because they were disciplined. So I knew these people are going to push the vision of the company forward. All right. Because they are here to do the work that we stand for. But some people are very much talented, but they lack the discipline. So we ended up firing them. Some people were fired before they, they even finished the probation. We let go of them. But they were very good people. Why? Because there is so much power in being disciplined. And like we said, guys, this is why you see you see that uh, some people fail to work together, even, even as partners. Because one partner is disciplined, the other one is not. You are working hard to build something. The other one is working hard to spend what you're working hard to, 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 to save. So there's no discipline, no financial discipline. You're working hard, you're bringing money home. The other guy is busy spending the money, taking the money away. I dealt with a client who had a husband who was stealing money from her. The husband stealing yeah. money from the wife. The wife is working hard to build something. The husband is also doing whatever he's, he can to steal money from the wife. All right? So it's, it's very difficult to grow like that. You need disciplined people, guys. Discipline is key. And we said this earlier. What helps you look for values? What do these people stand for? All right? Mm -hmm. That's why when you go for an interview, we, we, I, I, I always advise my clients, when you ask if you're an accountant, what, uh, tell us about yourself. Then you say, what, I can do bank reconciliation. So what? Because you are taught to do bank reconciliation uh, in the syllabus. It's there. You are expected to know. But what is it about you that's going to make you a good fit for my company? Why should I give you a job? A degree is not enough. Someone else has a degree. A master's is not enough. Someone else has a master's. What is it other than the qualification about you yourself that can make me give you uh, this, this position? It all boils down to discipline. It boils down mm -hmm. to what you stand for your values, it boils down to what you believe in. That's what makes a very good uh, leader and uh, a, a good team, disciplined people, because they're going to work in harmony, all right? If your people are stealing from you, I have people say, you know what, because you don't take time to assess or to bring in your team, all right? Yeah. Remember, uh, we, 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 are the, we, are the, we are the house of some time back in our house. She came to work for us. The first time I saw this lady, I knew she was a problem. And you know, I, I don't you know when we, had, we have a house up sometimes, people can say I'm misjudging, but I looked at the way she was dressed. Just from the way she was dressed, the first time she came for work, I immediately knew there's a problem here. And a week later, she wanted to steal some stuff and she was caught stealing stuff. Have you seen? Because uh, of, of being alert to assessing people, and I was telling the people who brought her, you see what I told you? I saw a problem already because she also comes remember, with a bear bag, like serious. Big bear back, and you're coming to a man's house who's hiding a bear back. Already, you know, ah, this one, no, can't we? House helpers understand that in the house, what if there's a woman in this house and then you have a bear back? Those are problems. So, just the dress code alone was able to tell me there's a problem here. We, we told the, the, the med center, can you give us someone else? They said, no, she's okay. She said, no, she's not okay. Because we saw from the, the dress code that there's, there's a problem. And for sure, two weeks later, she was caught stealing. Have you seen? So, if you have people stealing from you, they are bringing you down. Right, they are bringing you yeah. down. You are working hard to bring money, someone's working hard to steal money from you. It's not a good thing. So, before you bring somebody into your life, into your business, can you evaluate what they stand for? If you like, you can close your eyes and do what the majority do. They say, without shame, never marry somebody you're not socially compatible with. But they forget that after that, there's going to be bills to be paid, there's going to be a life to build school fees to pay, rentals to pay, food to buy. How, how, many time, how much time do you spend in sexual relations? And how much time do you spend making money? You spend more time making money. You're going to need a brain to support you. You don't need feelings. You need somebody to tell you the sense, to advise, to tell you this is wrong. So make decisions that are sound. Don't go with the majority. No, so what? You spend more time looking for money. Yeah, more time. You know, you know, money. Shadrach, the, you, you, the, the point even about discipline and values is that discipline is an offshoot of values. What, yeah. where, where people are, Ill, are not disciplined is often the fact that in something that you are concerned about is simply because yeah. they value something very different to what you do, or even their values yeah. are contradictory. In fact, one of the greatest signs of conflict, if you look at the Thomas Klinman model of, of conflict, the, the two greatest conflicts that people have 
his needs, okay, basic needs, food, uh, shelter, clothing, those things. We'll fight over those things. And mm. values. And values are often deeper. Values are where you find serious levels of conflict with people, yeah. serious levels of, of conflict. So if you want to avoid the problems of excessive conflict, you want to make sure that the values are, are through it. So I think good to yeah. great companies, and I'm, now, and, and I'm going to now flip into this final point, is that they build companies based on culture. They build, yeah. you know, there they, are three C's, and, and there's, a, there's a video I shared earlier, I think, with uh, Shadrach and everyone, and I don't know if I can grab it. I'll try and look for it very yeah. quickly. But this is about this company called The Daily Wire. The Daily Wire is an American um, media enterprise. Okay. Now, they, they, what they have understood is that America is fragmented by ideology, political and social ideology. The liberals, those who accept the, the LGBT style of life, they don't want marriage. They want all sorts of things in life. Like the very, they lean very strong to big government, uh, debt, everything. Then there's the conservative people who believe in families. They believe in, in God. They believe in, they've got a very strong, sturdy lifestyle in terms of their conservative values. Now in yeah. life, you have this mix where there is a liberal and there is a conservative view and there's a time for these things. But in terms of governance structures, there's always this thing of, we always want liberals, want liberals. Now, what, what the Daily Wire found was this. They found that uh, the liberal agenda was being pushed through uh, media companies. So in other words, you'll find liberal agendas being pushed through the news stations, liberal agendas being pushed through the, the, uh, the, the, through Hollywood. Hollywood will promote all these alternative lifestyles that people are not comfortable with. So what the yeah. Daily Wire did was they said they're going to build an entity based on changing culture. They said we're going yeah. to now go into there, create movies that promote conservative ideology. We're going to create uh, news that preserves and promotes conservative ideology. And what they did was they built their business on a cause. This is what you want to see about when it comes to them. Now, the Daily Wire has actually become one of the biggest conservative channels in that Shadrach, now they have, and this was a show which I think they just 10 years ago, they started with a guy called Ben Shapiro, where he just built a show. He was just doing a podcast like this, okay? He has now been viewed over 2 billion times, but their network, they've got paid. They've now built an online platform with paid subscription. People who pay like $10 a month to come and view their premium content, not just the stuff yeah. that's on YouTube. They go to their website. They've got what they just crossed over 1 million people. Okay. 1 million people on a monthly basis are paying this business that just started on its own to just now buy content, watch their movies, stuff like that, because they're selling a cause. They're not just selling a product, Shadrach. They're selling a cause. They sold their mission, okay? And he, they, they even have town halls with their, with their staff where they actually do this. And the three things I picked up on, they, they, they built their business on a cause, okay? So yeah. the mission and the vision became this cause. So yes, they're making money. They're charging. They're making $10 million a month, 10 to $20 million a month in subscription revenue. That, that's not small money, Shadrach. That's a lot, a lot of, of money, money. okay? But yeah. that's a business making 10 to $20 million a month. Dave Ramsey started his business. Uh, now he has people subscribing. He has, over, he has over a million people or 2 million people, sorry, who pay $120 a year to subscribe to his system of Ramsey solutions where people have got personal finance solutions, budgeting solutions, debt management solutions, all sorts of things. Why? He had built a business on a cause to get Americans to be much more financially strong, the American households to have much more financial strength. And people believed in his cause. So in other words, building your business on a cause. The second thing the Daily Wire did when I, when I watched that thing is they built a community. Okay. Uh, Vusi Tembukwaya recently said this. He said, when you build a product, build a tribe around that product. Because he said a tribe is just a group of people who want to do something the same way or they believe in doing something the same way. They've got similar ideas. They've got ways they follow. So what he was trying to tell people is that build a tribe. It's extremely important. Your, 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 the people who ascribe to your services. I, I've started yeah. something called the, um, you know, in, in Bond Education, I've said all the people who have, who have, um, who have, who have graduated from Bond Education now join something called the Financial Freedom Fighters Army. And I am now working with those people to continuously communicate to them. We're now, we're now crafting premium content and premium things that we want to start serving that group of people with because they have made a step 
to actually become much better with their finances and the investments. And I want to make sure that I keep grooming and nurturing them. That's a community. You can have many followers on Facebook, but who are your community of consumers? The people who constantly consume your product, the people who believe in the mission that you, that you have put out, the people who bought into it, that is a community. So you understand that, are you creating a community out of your product? That's two. And the third thing that they've built is they've turned their product not just into a product which is convenient and all these things, but Shadrach, something bigger. It's a culture. Is yeah. your product a way of life? Coca-Cola is a way of life. Like, it's actually a way of life for people. Sprite is a way of life. Even Trade King snacks, those are a way of life for families. Boom is a way of life, okay? Uh, insurance products, bank, the bank you choose becomes your way of life. So the truth yeah. is, is your product woven into your cultural practices as a person? Have you, have you become the way of life? For the people that are consuming it. The Daily Wire, when they were selling their, their media content, they're saying, we are selling you a way of life. You can preserve your conservatism by consuming premium content that aligns with your values. We believe in what you believe in. Now we want to make TV. We don't want you to have to go to the movies and you're constantly seeing men together and you're not comfortable with this. Okay? You're not comfortable with this. You want to see movies which promote good, strong Christian couples together families together it promotes family values so that you feel good about what you're watching so it now allows these people to express their way of life through their products so that's the reality okay so the three things i want everyone wh whatever your beliefs is to think about something is your product a cause is it driven by a cause is it helping deliver a cause is it creating a culture and are you creating a community around that cause and that culture if you are doing those three things, phenomenally, I believe that that's where you're building a good to great company. Once you're breaking through that, you're building good to great companies. Because even Apple users, Apple phone users are also a community behind the cause of distribution of technology. And there's a culture, there's a way of living that iPhone users utilize. Shadrach, I don't know what are your thoughts on those three C's of cause, culture, and community. Yeah, Minumba, uh, the, 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 the culture, community, and cause are extremely fantastic uh, elements of every successful business. Like, I'll give an example of my business, all right? Guys, family finance has become a way of life. Minumba, every time I talk to couples or somebody in a social relationship or a single lady or a single gentleman, they come, we sit down, we, we do financial planning. I see the joy that somebody experiences. I have people that are older than me. They say, you know what, my child is a father. People are extremely older than me because I wish my wife and I knew this five years ago. Even just last year, by now we could have built our own house. We could have built our own poetry. All right. Every time I see a phone call and message, thank you so much. I've now built your poetry. Thank you so much. My business is running. Thank you so much. Now financial uh, roadmap has been set for our family. Thank you so much. The budget is working. I feel good because I'm seeing that my business is saving a certain need in people's lives. So if your business can become a way of life. It's, look, when I talk about family finance, for example, I talk about financial transparency as one of the topics in family finance. That's a way of life for people that are married. Financial transparency is a way of life. So once the husband and wife understand the value of financial transparency, it changes their love forever. And people call, they say, you know what? Thank you so very much. I wish we knew this area. That makes me feel so good. So if you are starting a business, ask yourself, is this business going to be a way of life? Because as long as it's a way of life, it will last as long as you live. People and it will always get recommended. Use it. It and it will get recommended. recommended. <laughs> yeah, I was just so, speaking at, at 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 you know I I I at the at the organization say church. They called me some weeks ago. They told me, you know what? We uh, one of their members follows my my page. Says, we follow your page. We like what you, what you talked about uh, couples. We like you to come and talk to our church members. So this man is a pastor. He organized couples in his church and he called me to go and speak to them. I, I felt, wow, so this is a way of life. A crazy man has watched my video and what does he do? He goes and calls his church members. He organized that event and he called me to go and speak to couples. I felt my business making an impact in people's lives. So that means if, 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 it, if it, it, it is being recognized and recommended like that, it's going to last the test of time because it's a way of life. For a husband, a wife, a fiancé, boyfriend, girlfriend to live uh, in harmony, they need financial transparency. That's a way of life. So what business are you building? Is it a way of life? Like Coca-Cola is a way of life. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, a lot of things. Are, so think about boom. Those are what well, we need to wash clothing. That's the way of life. Think about different uh, uh, businesses that I work with. That we that we look at Zesco. Electricity is the way of life. We need power to power our laptops, to to, to charge our cameras. We need all those things. It's the way of life. Talk to right. Uh, Talk to the way of life. Yeah, even cameras are a way of life because we need to capture our great moments. I I, I, I have I have a camera to use to capture my my precious moments because it's the way of life. Having a camera now is a way of life. I have to stream live. It's the way of life. So what business are you building that is a way of life? Because if it's a way of life, people will spend more on it and it is going to last a test of time because it's a way of life. You don't have to, to spend much on marketing because it's a way of life. Yeah. Because one, you don't have to resell to people. You don't have to no. keep convincing them to come back. And two, no. you don't have to constantly, you, 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 they will recommend people promote their ways of life. Okay, yeah. like I, I, I'll give you an example. I, I went to the hospitals multiple times. I had a, I had a stomach, I had a stomach problem once, uh, and it was, it was excessive. It was getting to my life. Uh, it was actually now upsetting my work. And I went to Umoyo, and and they, they actually recommended something which I use to this day. I actually use uh, what's it, the treatments that they gave me. And it's not look, Umoyo is not a healthcare center, but they do deal in um, in organic. Um, supplements and they deal with herbal medicine effectively yeah. they're herbal medicine uh well not really herbal medicine but herbals that you can decide because i know the doctors will start sprinting and fighting about this but i utilized it and it helped now regulate my my, my stomach and it's to a point where i live a much more healthy and better life do you know what happens whenever somebody has a stomach problem and they tell me about it i tell them what i did okay so there's their marketing free okay that's their marketing because a person will come to me and say, man, I'm going to an issue. I've got get, and I'll tell them, look, this is what happened with me. This is how it helped. What do you think that person's going to try? They're going to go to that shop and try it. So yeah. there's their marketing. Did they have to spend on that? No. A person will always, a person who has had a good customer experience will now make it a way of life. And two, they will make it much better. They, they will tell their yeah. friends about it. So that's why I said, build it on, a, build, build a, a, a Build your business on a cause, make it a culture, a way of life for people, and build a community. People become very comfortable when they're not the only one doing something. When they feel like they're part of a community of people, they become even more encouraged. And I'll tell you this, Shadrach, I have two streams of products that we offer in, in bond education. One, people can go on their own and start investing in government bonds on their own, and they do. But where I've seen people really stronger is people are forming cooperatives where they actually now there's something called a bond cooperative that has happened where groups are forming that and we're helping just oversee it and advise it. What I've noticed with that group of people is that the the continuation of people being consistent and disciplined is much higher amongst cooperative members than it is amongst individual members yeah. because community yeah. helps stir discipline. That's one thing I've yeah. noticed. So if you want your customers mm -hmm. to constantly use your product let them feel like the use of your product allows them to stay in a community because humans are community driven. So when, whenever your people are thinking, okay, I'm part of a community. So do you have a group? Do you have a way of collecting people together? Can they gather together in some way, shape or form around your product? Once they feel like there's a community aspect to it, you'll often see that they even start marketing the growth of their community. The community starts marketing itself. And that's the difference between good to great users, between good to great companies as well. There's a community aspect, culture aspect, and cause-driven aspect. You need to ask yourself about these three things when you're running your business. Are, are you building yeah. these three things? Because this is what turns it into an automated growth structure that even outgrows you. It, it grows bigger than you thought. It outpaces you bigger than you thought. So that's yeah. part of what I'm, I'm, I'm looking at now. Now, obviously, this, these are just some things for us to look at. Um, at the end, remember that Enterprise Corner is brought to you by Zatu Media and also uh, brought by Platinum Services, uh, which we do have, uh, which we do have services on self. So for those of you who are getting yeah. ready to invest, uh, to look at your savings at the end of the year, to get into that final bond auction that's happening on the 23rd of December. We always advise people that if you start bond education now, which is only 500 quarter, you're actually going to be able to pull yourself through towards the end. Bond education users often find themselves are able to get to a bond auction at least by this coming month or the next one. You often find that yeah. by going through the learning process. And what we advise people is get an education, get on a plan, and then get started.
Don't just get started. Get knowledge first. Get on a plan and get started. So us at Zatu Media, we brought we, we Enterprise Corner as part of this. So if you're looking on how to start investing your money and you're looking to try and get towards uh, your, your financial goals, join Bond Education. It's 500 kwacha. It's worth the knowledge. It comes with the tools and it guides you all the way through. It meets that need of getting through the confusion and complexity of the investment process. Contact us. Uh, you can contact me through this Facebook Live here. Yeah, I mean, you can contact us through my Facebook page. Uh, you'll see all the details, which numbers to contact. Please find me on my Facebook page. The contact number is there. The, the emails are there and you're able to now get through to people. But also remember, Enterprise Corner is also brought to you by Platinum Advisors, of which Shadrach also has products available. Shadrach, please include the people in what you have on offer. Yeah, so currently we have uh, family finance going at uh, quarter 700. We reduced the price for January. Uh, we announced this one should be a month ago and the slots are moving very fast. If you want to be part of a class, if you're a couple, either in a serious relationship or you are somebody in a marriage setup, you may want to come and you know for this program. It's going to help you uh, structure things properly. Or if you're somebody who wants to get into a relationship, this is going to help you to come understand the money issues. So we have uh, financial planning for single ladies. We have platinum advisory, uh, which is a, a family finance for also uh, couples. Then we have also uh, financial planning uh, and investment for uh, single uh, men. So if you are single people, single ladies and gentlemen, and couples, we have you covered. It is only 700 kwacha for uh, family finance. And then uh, for uh, uh, single ladies, 500 kwacha. Single men is 500 kwacha. So this is starting on in January uh, next year, next month. Yeah, we were, we've been advertising. So guys, normally I charge one five pay of this course. So the general one is half the price, all right? But because we put into consideration, you know, people are going to spend money on holidays, vacations, there are lots of school fees. So we said, okay, fine, let's reduce a bit to our clients. Let's give them at a, a, a 700 quarter. So if you want to be part of the general class, our classes are getting full very fast. Slots are moving right now. You can you, you may just contact us, uh, go to uh, Shadrick's accountant page or call 0953. Nine seven nine seven nine eight. So there's that number that I've put uh, in the comment section that you may just want to contact if you want to enroll for that particular class. It's gonna help you big deal. Number, thank you so very much for this amazing program, and uh, I want to appreciate our viewers. Maybe we can make some shout outs to our audience, some famous names as usual. Yeah. So thank you. Um, and there is a question I think. Sorry, that was remaining unanswered. Uh, there's a gentleman here at the end. His name is Kennedy Mbewa. He says, can a country uh, can a country become a first world country in this age without technology? Uh, I'm not sure if if the, 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 the question we're not saying is that you don't need technology. We're saying that technology is not the creator of prosperity. Technology yeah. is the accelerator towards prosperity. But yeah. if you don't yeah. have the discipline to develop yourself into a prosperous nation. If you don't have yeah. the products and you don't have the services, technology just becomes a cost with which will end up driving you down. There is technology sitting, and I'm telling you people this, if you go to companies like our electricity providers, there's technology sitting there. But unfortunately, there's also unfortunately a bad culture. There's technology sitting in many institutions, but there's also a bad culture. So people need to understand there's where there's bad culture, where there's bad people, or let me not say bad people, where there's non-disciplined people and non-disciplined thinking, technology has no effect of improving you. But where there is the foundation of disciplined people and disciplined thinking, technology will accelerate you faster than you think. So have the foundations to make sure technology does very well for you and doesn't just become a capital cost which ends up draining you. Um, uh, and I've said this before, Dominic, uh, sorry, sorry, um, Shadrach, is that we've run into, we've run a, I remember working at a firm that bought a trading system, which people were trading, you could trade super speed, but they didn't have the clients. They didn't have the products on offer. They didn't, they did that. There was a poor culture. So that system ended up becoming a cost that was draining the company and it was never able to grow into that system properly because they never focused on the culture first and the people. They never focused on the talent and the thinking before they brought in the technology, which would then drive new customers. But until they created that, and they didn't create a cause, a community, and a culture of their customers in order to be able to do that. So because they didn't do those processes, the technology became a cost more than it became a, a benefit. And also, let me give you an example. Look at the road networks of this country. We've built wonderful, lavish roads at huge costs. 
But are we? Uh, have they yielded any economic gains yet? No. Can they? No, because we haven't built the discipline and thinking amongst the people to utilize those roads for trade activity, business activity, growth. We haven't invested in that first before we bring in roads and things like that. So there's a thinking and a grooming of people that needs to happen before technology can have a good impact. That's how you become a first world nation. China did not become a first world nation because of the technology it had. It, had, it became a first world nation because of the thinking of the people and the discipline of the people. I just wanted to put that out. So Shadrach, let's give a shout out to some people. I don't know if you have some thoughts on that, sorry, as well. No, no, you, you've done a nice job, number. fantastic job. So we have, uh, of course, Wesley Mbale says, powerful, thank you so much, Wesley, for uh, showing up. It's good to see you. Chomba tabloids, this Chomba tabloid, I keep yeah. seeing this name, thank you so much. Uh, oh, power has gone in Choma. You see, we have a problem mm -hmm. with this call. This is why we need a competitor to come in, all right? There's a problem already oh, with power. We need a competitor oh, to come in. Yeah, uh, we have Bernard Chongo says, you guys are powerful. Thank you so much, Ben. It's good to have you here. Uh, Taizia is laughing at us, is laughing with us. <laughs> we have uh, Mundia, uh, who says, very helpful. Thank you so much, Mundia, to have you here. Of course, we have John, uh, John, who says, oh, thanking a friend. Thank you, John, for inviting your friend. And yes, Francesca, yes, Francesca is here. Guys, Francesca is a family member for this platform. Francesca is always here. It's always good to see you, Francesca. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have, um, of course, uh, Mukuka, uh, not a thing. Okay, that's Mukuka. Thank you guys for coming. Aida, thank you so very much. We have quite a lot of people. Abidion's ways, Daniel, lots of people have joined us. Prince uh, from uh, Mpika. Mpika is here. Thank you so very much, Prince. We have Kwangu. Uh, Kwangu is, uh, uh, thank you so much. Then we have Katele and Tompa, who is from, Kat from Lusaka. Okay, from Lusaka. Let me have some new comments coming through. This is uh, from uh, Kaleb, who says, very helpful. Thank you, Kaleb. We keep seeing Kaleb on this platform. He's a uh, first member of this platform. We appreciate you, Kaleb. Thank you so very much. So, remember, uh, it's been a fantastic show. I'm very grateful, my friend. Uh, well researched. Uh, this is uh, really, indeed, uh, value-added uh, sessions. Guys, those of you on this platform, we appreciate you. You are spending your time very well because you are consuming information that's going to add value to your financial lives. And uh, please do give us um, some topics you'd like us to talk about next time, what you're looking forward to, and give us your feedback. That would be very helpful. Nyumba, over to you. Thank you very much to everyone for joining us. We will catch you next week on the Enterprise Corner where we're going to talk about now getting ready for 2023. We're going to start talking about some trends. We're going to talk about ways to plan. These are just some things we want to follow. Ways to plan, trends to catch up to 2023. Let's prepare ourselves. You really don't want to miss the next two sessions. And to everyone, we have a countdown till Christmas. It's what, 21 days remaining. Uh, it's time for to finish the year strong. Yes, I'm a Christmas person. So yes, finish the year <laughs> so that you can have the festive season you, you deserve. Not have the festive season you want to borrow for. Have the festive season you deserve. Okay, so finish strong so that you can enjoy and enjoy without guilt. But to everyone, thank you so much for being with us. Shadrach, thank you, my brother, for spending time with us. And everyone, have a wonderful weekend.